Grass. He said our democracy is under unprecedented assault, an assault on the citadel of democracy. Today is a reminder, a painful one, that democracy is fragile. He called upon the president to speak. What This is what I was going to ask you right before Mr. Biden began speaking. What should the leadership and the president be doing right now to tamp this down? Well, Paula, you referred before the president-elect came out to speak to an interview on CBS with Nora O'Donnell in which Kevin McCarthy, the House minority leader, with desperation in his voice was pleading for President Trump to come out and uh, not just throw out a couple of cursory tweets, come out, get on the radio, get on TV, mm. and uh, essentially uh, order his fans here to back off. And, and, and evacuate the Capitol building. And so far, he isn't doing it. Uh, McCarthy's not the only one. And the desperation in, in the voices of McCarthy and other Republicans who've been making this plea, I think speaks both to the shock at the violation of their own workspace and also their panic at the prospect of what this could mean mm. politically. I think they were already, many of them, in a panic about what a post-Trump world is going to be like for them with so many, shall we say, ardent adherents of Trump still standing by him and him forcing loyalty tests on Republicans across the country. Uh, but now, with this on his record, you know, this kind of business that's going on in the Capitol today doesn't play well with most Americans. Think back to last summer and the protests uh, triggered by the murder of George Floyd out in Minneapolis. Overwhelmingly peaceful, as the overwhelming majority of uh, uh, people in Washington today behaved peacefully, but the violent actions of a few did a number on the approval rating, fairly or not, of the Black Lives Matter movement. You saw support for it, which initially had soared, right. dip considerably. That's the kind of thing Republicans like Kevin McCarthy are freaking out about right now, along with their own personal fear. Sure. And it seems like a very long time ago now in light of today's events, but just this morning, they were probably freaking out because of what had happened in Georgia uh, just last night. Uh, our traditionally red state now uh, projected by CBS News with two. Uh, members of the Senate who are Democrats. So Democrats win control of the Senate. That has been called now by CBS News. And uh, with the two weeks left of the president's term, uh, how can this be handled? Uh, do you know procedurally? Uh, Leah Martin, uh, our anchor, was asking this a little bit earlier. Now that the electoral vote count has been interrupted and the chamber cleared for obvious reasons. Do they have to go back and continue that procedure today? Obviously, safety is an issue. Do you think that'll be just delayed and they'll take it up again tomorrow? How will we move forward over the next couple of days when we hope this scene is peacefully cleared? Well, these thugs will be removed, hopefully sooner rather than later. And in theory, uh, deliber deliberations could resume. It'll be interesting to see how the Republicans that were lined up to lodge all these objections uh, to uh, the electoral vote re results in a number of states choose to proceed in the wake of this. Uh, I imagine there might be uh, an effort to get, uh, uh, get them to drop their objections so we, mm. they can just wrap this up and move on. I, I mean, we'll find out soon enough, Paula. I believe there are some procedural issues once this process began as it did earlier this afternoon. They have five days to complete it or else there's some kind of problems with it. It shouldn't take that long. Mm -hmm. But uh, this has to be giving pause to every serious Republican official in the country about uh, what kind of circumstance, what kind of political culture they think they can thrive under going forward. They look at what happened in Georgia, look at what happened in the presidential race, look at what happened in the 2018 House elections and say, you know, this has not mm -hmm. been a politically productive period for us. Oh, what are we going to do to get this Trump albatross and the albatross that a portion of his followers represent, the clowns that are acting out in Washington today, 
What are we going to do to get that off our back going forward? Our Republican governor, Charlie Baker, never a Trump fan, tweeted this just a few moments ago within the last minute, 10 minutes. I join with Americans from every corner of the country to condemn the violence unfolding at the Capitol, and President Trump and his supporters must do the same immediately. The chaos now unfolding is the sad but predictable outcome of weeks of attacks perpetuated by President Trump, excuse me, perpetrated by President Trump and his supporters against the democratic process that makes America the greatest nation on earth. These baseless challenges to President-elect Biden's victory must stop. So that is for a Republican who's always been on the record. Former Congressman Joe Kennedy III tweeted that the consequences of Mitch McConnell's silence and appeasement are literally storming the Capitol right now while our country looks on in horror. He gave a good speech today four years too late. So Mitch McConnell was uh, very firm about the fact that the election results would not be overturned. But what about what Congressman Kennedy had to say? Do you think there's going to be a lot of criticism about uh, Speaker McConnell giving that speech today? Look, McConnell and really all Republicans in positions of authority uh, who haven't been like Charlie Baker and some others uh, distancing themselves from Trump and Trumpism for some time are, are going to be called to account t for this to some extent. Uh, but, you know, the, the Trumpism was born out of a schism within the party between the party establishment, perhaps personified best by the Bush family and Jeb Bush in the 2016 election, and people who were fed up with where the Republican Party establishment was leading them. That's the core group that Trump was able to tap into. Uh, however, you know, it's, it's entirely unclear who's who at this point. I saw a tweet earlier today from Ari Fleischer. Remember him? He was, yes. uh, I believe, press President secretary Bush. to George H.W. Bush for a while. Yep. Uh, uh, he tweeted, yeah, what happened at the, what's happening at the Capitol is bad, but this is what happens as a result of four years of unfair attacks on President Trump. So, you know, who's going to stand up against this in an emphatic way? And who isn't? You know, the Republican Party really faces some difficult decisions here. And, mm -hmm. you know, Donald Trump and his pack of merry grifters are not going to go away easily. He drew 73 million votes back in November, Paula. Well, That's a lot of votes. And 